Hello everybody. Uh, so here we are talking about graphing exponential functions, day one of the new chapter. I'm just going to go through these examples here. Uh, there's a uh, blank copy of this um, on Schoology if you would like to kind of follow along and fill it in, pause as needed, and then uh, complete pages one through seven for homework tonight. Okay, uh, first one, y equals two to the x. We're going to start with negative one, zero, one, and two as our x values we're going to plug in. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 to the 2 is 4. So the basic parent function of the exponential would look like negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. So it's a function that looks like this. Uh, the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers. So we can say from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, the range uh, does not cross the x-axis because no matter what value of x you plug in this part can never end up being a negative number or zero so the range would be zero comma infinity and we do have an asymptote at y equals zero moving on to y equals one half uh, to the x so this one the base is less than one let's see what happens negative one zero one and two when we plug in negative one this time we would get one half to the negative one is the same as 2 to the positive 1. Flip the fraction and make that positive. So this actually goes to 2. Anything to the 0 is 1. 1 half to the 1, of course, is 1 half and 1 fourth. So we might want to sneak in an extra point of negative 2, 4 here to get a better sense of what this graph looks like. Negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2. And it looks like this. Uh, the domain range and asymptote would all be the same for this. So if the base <coughs> is greater than 1, this is known as growth because it's increasing. If the base is between 0 and 1, it's known as decay because it's decreasing in value. In both these cases, this lead term needs to be positive in order for it to be growth or decay, otherwise the graph would be entirely underneath the x-axis. It would still be an exponential function, but not growth and not decay. Okay, we're also going to talk about this number e in this chapter. Let's look at what happens with e. So e to the 0, of course, is just going to be 1. e to the 1. Now you might remember e to the e is 2.71828. We're going to abbreviate that as 2.7. On the calculator, not sure if this is going to come through, but if you hit second, uh, ln, and then we're going to raise this to the 2, we get 7.4, approximately. And then if we do second ln e to the negative 1, we get 0 0.36. So I'm just going to call that 0.4. So this graph is going to look very similar to that first graph we did. Uh, because the values, it's a base of 2.7 instead of a base of 2. So it's just slightly steeper. Um, but we are going to be looking at E and just use those decimals as the parent function. Speaking of parent function, we're now going to move on to this sheet. We're going to graph this function. I'm just going to copy the original values over here of the parent function. And now we're going to go on to the second page and the last page of notes here. So, thinking about shifts, uh, horizontal shifts, things that directly impact the x, that's that x there, always goes in the opposite. So we're going to add 2 to all our x values. The 3 here, plus 4, those both impact the y. So 3y plus 4. So if we add 2 to all the x values, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Multiply the y values by 3 and add 4. You know, just might take a calculator, and you'll be allowed a calculator here. So we get 1.2 plus 4 is 5.2, uh, 3 plus 4 is 7, 2.7 would be 8.1, 12.1, uh, 3 times 7.4 would be 22.2, I think, plus 4 is 26.2. So these become um, off the table. Now this 4, if you think about the parent function normally having a horizontal asymptote at 0, this shifts everything up 4. So now our horizontal asymptote is going to be here. That's why all these numbers might have seemed a little larger than you're expecting. So 1 comma 5.2. 
Wait, that should be 4.2. Nope, 5.2, because it's multiplied by 3, right? 2 comma 7. And 3 comma 12.2 up there, so this graph will look something like this. We have the horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. And the range here would be 4 to infinity instead of 0 to infinity. Okay, final problem here. Uh, we have the same kind of concept. We're going to go from negative 2 to 2 for the parent function y equals 1 half to the x. Based on what we did before, you know that these are the parent function values. The vertical shift is nice and easy. We're just going to add 2 to y. So I'll take care of that first. Now, this horizontal shift is the tricky thing. We haven't talked about this much this year, like 3 minus x, has it? The best way of going about a horizontal shift that's complicated like this is by setting this whole thing equal to each of the x values in the parent function. So, for example, 3 minus x equals negative 2. If we solve for x now, subtract 3, we get x equals 5. So that's what I'm going to put there. If I set 3 minus x equal to negative 1, I get 4, 3 minus x equals 0, x equals 3, and we can kind of sense the pattern here, it's just going to go 2, 1. Uh, so it's easier to kind of work through this way than try to figure it out uh, conceptually what happens there. Uh, 5, 6 is going to go here, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2.5, 2, 2, we know that the Horizontal asymptote is going to be a 2. And we have a graph that looks like this. So, even though the base was 1 half because the x was negative, it ended up being a growth function. A little trick there that happened um, because the, the negative, if you think about the negative x, the positive 1 half would have made it 2 to the positive x in a similar kind of problem. Uh, so, it ended up undoing itself with the turning decay into growth. Um, okay, so that's that. You can, of course, go back and pause it. I know I went through that quickly. Uh, good luck today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.